Worried about inflation? Wondering how to slay the inflation dragon? Want to know which investment strategy beats inflation and which stocks are killing inflation? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, if you want exclusive access to my personal six-figure stock portfolio and alerts on any new investments I make, check out the Patreon link in the description below. Inflation is one of the big stories of 2022. That's true for investors and it's true for, well, everyone else. So how do we investors slay the inflation dragon? Well, the first thing is to understand exactly what it is. And then you implement an investment strategy that beats it by investing in businesses that are killing it. Today, I wanna to tell you about the best long-term investment strategy and some of the best stocks to consider buying in this inflationary environment. Ready? Let's dig in. The long-term investment strategy you should consider implementing in this inflationary environment is dividend growth investing. This strategy is all about buying and holding shares in world-class enterprises that pay reliable rising dividends to their shareholders. And how are those reliable rising dividends funded? By producing reliable rising profits. You can't continuously write checks that cannot be cashed. Certainly can't continue to write ever bigger checks. It just doesn't work. I like to say that dividends are the proof in the profit pudding. And as that pudding pile expands, so should the dividends. And it's the growth of the dividends here that is critical. It's not just dividends. It's growing dividends. This is key. After all, what is inflation? It refers to a general progressive increase in prices of goods and services in an economy. It's a rate of change, a rate of growth. It's, say, the can of soup going from $3 to $3.20 year over year. It's, say, rent going from $1,200 a month to $1,300 a month in a year. Inflation is measured in percentage terms as a rate of growth. What else is a rate of growth? Dividend growth, of course. Here's the big mistake a lot of new or uninformed investors make, comparing yield to inflation. This is wrong. They see a stock yielding 3% and say that this is a lot lower than the 8.5% year-over-year inflation rate the U.S. recently printed. Now, let's remember that one's personal rate of inflation won't be exactly 8.5% anyway. If you have fixed mortgage and car payments, two of the biggest monthly bills most people contend with, your personal rate of inflation might be quite a bit lower than 8.5%. Plus, inflation varies by location, but we'll put that aside. Yes, 3% is way lower than 8.5%, but yield in and of itself has almost nothing to do with the inflation rate. Yield tells you how much income you can produce from an investment, but inflation tells you by what rate things will get more expensive. Thus, you need to know by what rate your income will increase by. Comparing yield to the inflation rate straight up is incorrect. If this were a correct comparison, all stocks yielding 0% would be practically worthless right now, but we know that's not true. Yield is simply a measurement of an annual dividend payout against a stock's price. You divide the dividend by the price and get yield, but that's not a rate of change. That's not a growth rate like inflation is. Yield is an important number for an investor, sure, just like earnings per share is an important number, but yield all by itself has nothing to do with the rate of inflation. Now, yield is a part of the whole package for an investment. It's part of a stock's total return, which is what you get when you add all dividends and capital gains received. An annualized total return can certainly be lined up against annualized inflation, which is definitely what you'd be doing with a stock that doesn't pay any dividend at all. But yield alone cannot be compared to inflation alone. 
I'll explain this using numbers. Let's say your portfolio is producing $20,000 a year in dividend income and you've hammered your expenses down to $20,000 a year. Congratulations, you've reached the crossover point, the point at which passive income matches expenses. You're financially independent. Now that $20,000 a year in dividend income could come about in many different ways. Maybe it's a $500,000 portfolio yielding 4%. Maybe it's a $400,000 portfolio yielding 5%. Or it could be a $666,000 portfolio yielding 3%, so on and so forth. Depends on how you've structured your portfolio. But as you can see, all of these yield numbers are lower than the 8.5% annual inflation rate in the US right now. Again though, that comparison is wrong. The rate of dividend growth, the rate of inflation. These are the comparisons to make. If a dividend growth rate is higher than the rate of inflation, your purchasing power is increasing and vice versa, of course. Let's say you've got a $666,000 portfolio yielding 3% in order to produce that $20,000 a year in dividend income. The lowest yield example of the three I provided. 3% is way lower than 8.5%. This investor must be doomed, right? Wrong. The 3% yield on its own is pretty much irrelevant here. It's the rate of dividend growth that's relevant. Let's then assume that this portfolio is averaging 9% dividend growth this year. Well, inflation is running at 8.5% in US year over year. So what happens to this person's purchasing power using these numbers? It went up. Their annual expenses go from $20,000 to $21,700, an 8.5% year over year increase. But their annual dividend income went from $20,000 to $21,800, a 9% year over year increase. Their dividend income is growing faster than expenses because the rate of growth for dividend income exceeded the rate of growth of inflation. How are so many high quality dividend growth stocks out there able to grow their dividends at such high rates. Like I said earlier, dividend growth investing is all about investing in world-class businesses. World-class businesses grow at high rates by providing the world with the products and or services it demands. And the prices at which they provide these products and or services tends to rise year in and year out like clockwork, which trickles down to dividends growing year in and year out like clockwork. Higher prices, higher revenues, higher profits, higher dividends. The aforementioned can of soup that went up from $3 to $3.20? Yeah, the company selling that soup is now seeing more revenue from every can of soup it sells. The aforementioned rent that went from $1,200 a month to $1,300 a month. Well, the REIT renting those apartment units is now seeing its rental revenue rise from every unit it rents at a higher rate. If inflation is the general progressive increase in prices of goods and services in an economy, the companies selling goods and services at higher prices are obviously benefiting from it, and so are their shareholders. So how do you slay the inflation dragon? By investing in the very businesses that are raising their prices and are part of the general progressive increase in prices of goods and services in an economy. You plug directly into inflation and park your boat in a rising tide lifting all boats. Everyone is complaining about higher prices across all goods and services, but these higher prices don't come from some mystical ether. They come from the very companies we can all invest in, right? Want to benefit from higher prices on food, rent, gas, etc.? Okay, buy shares in the companies that are now charging higher prices for all of this. I now want to tell you about three dividend growth stocks that are growing their dividends way faster than inflation. First up, is Broadcom Inc. stock ticker AVGO. Broadcom is a global semiconductor and infrastructure software products company with a market cap of $239 billion. Technology is taking over our lives and that bodes well for the likes of Broadcom. Data centers, software, connectivity, broadband, wireless, etc. There are so many ways in which Broadcom can profit from technology's tightening grip on all elements of our global society. And profit they have, profit they do. Not only that, but they regularly grow their profit at outstanding rates, which has led to outstanding dividend growth. Broadcom's 10-year dividend growth rate is an astounding 43.6%. How's that for beating inflation? When your passive income is rising at a double-digit clip each year, even an 8.5% annual inflation rate 
isn't the big bad boogeyman it's made out to be. Now, to be fair, Broadcom's more recent dividend growth has been a bit more modest. Their last dividend increase came in at 13.9%. Still, that's way higher than the annual inflation rate in the US. Plus, you even get a nice yield of 2.8% here. And with free cash flow covering the dividend approximately twice over, the company's track record of 12 consecutive years of dividend increases looks set to get a lot longer. Next up, take a look at Domino's Pizza Inc. stock ticker DPZ. Domino's is a multinational pizza restaurant chain with a market cap of $14 billion. One thing that's gone up quite a bit recently, the pricing of all kinds of food. How did that happen? Companies that are part of the global food chain raise their prices, of course. This can actually benefit Domino's in two ways, besides the obvious higher absolute sales base and all that comes from that. One, it gives the company cover to raise its prices. They won't stand out when everything is going up. Second, higher grocery prices can end up making Domino's look more attractive as an alternative. When prices go way up, consumers sometimes trade down. Sticker shock at the grocery store can play right into Domino's hands, and that keeps this dividend growth train chugging along at a high speed. Domino's has grown its dividend at a five-year rate of 19.9%. Impressively, they haven't lost a lot of steam. The most recent dividend increase came in at 17%. That's twice as high as the rate of inflation. Now, the stock's somewhat low yield of 1.2% makes it difficult to build an entire portfolio around the likes of Domino's. However, some exposure to businesses growing at this kind of rate can boost the overall dividend growth rate of your entire portfolio. And with the payout ratio at 32.5%, Domino's looks set to continue increasing the dividend for years to come. They've already been doing just that for 10 consecutive years, and I think they're just getting started. Last but not least, let's quickly talk about Tractor Supply Company, stock ticker TSCO. Tractor Supply is a farm and ranch supplies retailer with a market cap of $24 billion. Tractor Supply is benefiting from a one-two punch right now. On one hand, the pandemic and the related lockdowns resulted in people fleeing cities for suburban and rural locations. That means more potential customers. Second, rising prices. When the prices of everything, including farm and ranch supplies goes up, what happens to the revenue over at Tractor Supply? It tends to also go up. Indeed, their Q4 report showed 15.3% year-over-year sales growth. What does that mean? Higher profits and higher dividends. This company has a fantastic 10-year dividend growth rate of 25.5%. But wait, there's more. Their most recent dividend increase came in at a jaw-dropping 76.9%. How's that for killing inflation? See, this is a perfect example of where a mistake can easily be made. A naive investor might see this stock's yield of 1.7% and think, this investment can't possibly keep up with inflation, but they're totally missing the point. Tractor supply has been a rocket when it comes to compounding the business, stock, and dividend at inflation beating rates. With a payout ratio of 42.7%, the company's track record of 13 consecutive years of dividend increases is likely only the start of much, much more. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about the best long-term investment strategy and some of the best stocks to consider buying in this inflationary environment. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high-quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.